Hello, my name is Boyana Duke and I'm a program manager on the InfoPath team. Over the next short while I want to show you how to build a basic form using InfoPath. So the form that we are looking at is what we're going to build. Um, it's a form that many of us have to fill out every week to send status to our manager and let them know what's going on. So I'm going to show you how to fill this form out and then we're going to show how to build it. So here I am, I'm Samantha. The date is going to be, let's say, the 17th, but it looks like there's something wrong with that selection. I hover over it. It says you cannot enter status for the future, so I'm going to have to select a new date. Today is the 11th. It's highlighted here. Let's try the 10th. That seems to work. So status is going to be orange, and then I'm going to set my risk to low, and then I will say that overall we are doing well. Add some more details about each of my team members. This is a repeating table here where I can add as many rows as I need to. And then here I can say not on track. And then when I'm finished filling this form out, I can use a submit button to send it to wherever the form designer wanted this form to get sent. When you first launch the InfoPath Designer, you'll see this screen. It asks you to select a template. Uh, based on which you want to build your form. So for our form, we're going to be uh, sending it through email to people who need to fill it out. So we're going to select the email template here, and then I'm going to click on Design This Form. The first thing you need to do when designing an InfoPath form is decide how you want to lay it out. InfoPath uses tables to lay out forms, and to that end we provide two types of tables. We have page layouts, and then we have section layouts, and both of these are located on the Insert tab. To start with, with the email form, we include one page layout, which is this entire table here, and that's uh, considered to be a container for the form. And then within the body of your page layout, we've included one section layout. You can add multiple section layouts to organize the data that you are collecting in your form. In this case, what I want to do is uh, customize this form a little bit because I'm not 100% happy with the default. So I'm going to center the form so it always looks centered in the view. I'm going to add a title, which will say status report. And then I'm going to start changing the layout here. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to insert a couple of other section layouts that are more appropriate for the type of form that I want to build. So here's the first one and then I'm going to build a second one here like that and then I will add one more third one which is going to look like this. So here what I've decided to do is I want to have one major section here, a second major section here and then within that there are two smaller subsections and I'm using subheading here to divide those two. One of the things that we've added to this release of InfoPath is the ability to change the overall look of your form. On the Page Design tab, you'll see Layout Styles. In this gallery, you can choose from four different styles, and then you can also select colors that are applied to those styles. So here I'm going to click on this semi-formal layout style and select a different color scheme. You can customize your form even further by taking advantage of the options that we have in the ribbon. What I've done here is added a border to the entire page layout. I've done this by using the Borders button on the Table Tools Contextual tab. This tab is available anytime that you have your cursor within a table cell. So here when I click on the Borders button, I get the Borders and Shading dialog box where I can make adjustments to my borders. For completing the layout of your form, you'll need to add some controls that your users will enter data into. So here I'm going to start by adding a label for the team manager control. I will insert a drop-down list. A drop-down list allows me to select what type of values the user can choose from. So I can go here and I can say edit choices. This is the control tools uh, contextual tab which has um, options specific to the control that I have selected. And here I will be able to add some options like Charlotte and Samantha. OK. What you'll notice also is that when I inserted this control, a new field was added here in the fields task pane. This is because the fields are actually the things that hold the data, whereas the controls are just windows into that data in the view. What you'll want to do is make some changes to your fields so that the names make sense to you.
Now I've spent some time adding the rest of the controls to my form. You can see that there are also a number of fields that have been added and named. When I click on a control in my form, its associated field is selected in the field's task pane. And when I click on a field in the field's task pane, its associated control is selected in the form. Now what I want to do is make sure that my form has some smarts. So to be sure that people don't enter dates that are in the future, I can add a rule selecting from a number of pre-built rules. The first thing to do is select a condition, and in my case, if the state is in the future, I can choose an action, and that action will be show validation error. The rules manager appears with the rule already built. I can go and edit the name of the rule so that I can stay organized, and I can also customize any parts of the rule. Here I will customize the screen tip. You can add other rules or edit existing rules through the Rules Manager. If you want to click on another field, you can see what rules are associated with that control or field. In this case, the Team Manager field does not have any rules associated with it. I'm almost ready to have people fill out my form. The next thing I need to do is give them a way to submit the form to me. So I will use a picture button for that purpose. First thing I'm going to do is go to the Properties tab, the Picture button, and add a picture from my computer. Then I will specify what action that picture button will take, and in my case I need to have it submit the form. And we need to add a data connection for the form to be submitted through. Now we want it to be through email, you have a variety of options, and we like email, so I'm going to click Add here. And then I will go through the wizard that appears and enter in some information. So the first thing that needs to happen is to tell InfoPath who to send this status report to, and then what the subject should be. Then you can specify what the form is called, so I'll just call it status report as well. You can use fields from the form if you want to add some more specific information to the form name. And click finish. Finally, I want to distribute my form to users to fill it out. To do that, I will go to the Share area. Once I click on Publish, a wizard will appear that will take me through the steps to publish this form. I will publish it through email, so users will get an email asking them to fill the form out. Now successfully built an InfoPath form. Thank you for tuning into this video. Come back over the next few weeks as we'll have some more in-depth videos for your viewing pleasure.